YouTube Frongs, welcome back to another complete guide, this time covering the return of our favorite masked Yaksha, Xiao. We'll be taking a look at his potential weapon choices, talents and playstyle, constellations, artifact choices, team comps, and showcasing him in the abyss. If you're new here first off, welcome to the channel and appreciate you dropping by. I also stream most nights on Twitch, feel free to check out my community over there and their chaotic chill vibes. Link in the description. Alright, let's begin. Timestamps are provided for your convenience. So, here's what my Xiao looks like so far. He has a base investment of a level 80 out of 80. He is unfortunately Constellation 3, so I'm not going to be testing him at Constellation 0. And with talents, 696. Plus 3 levels of the elemental skill comes from his Constellation 3. I'll be running my best 2-piece Viridescent, 2-piece Attack Percent set during weapon demonstrations to showcase and compare his best-in-slot higher-end damage output. His main stats are running a standard Attack Scaling DPS build, Attack Time Piece, Animo Goblet, and a crit or crit damage mask altering depending on the weapon choice. Here's what his artifacts look like. And his general stats with the Jade Spear at level 80 with the crit damage mask. Moving on to talents, I actually find Xiao's overall design fairly interesting as his talents are super straightforward and simplistic to understand, yet when combined to form his playstyle, they introduce lots of subtle complexity. Here's what to expect for Xiao. He is an attack scaling, greedy on field, plunge DPS character. Attack scaling is standard. Greedy on field means he needs to be kept on the field during his main rotation. Swapping out causes rotation short, so he prioritizes supports that have full value off field. Plunge DPS. This is unique in the current character roster, where Xiao's multiplier focus is not in his normal attack string, but rather his plunge damage. Not only that, but the low high plunge damage is actually a meaningful stat to be aware of to maximize his damage output. Alright, onto his skills. So, normal attack. This is a standard polearm rotation, but that's not the main focus as we mentioned. Low high plunge damage is what we're curious about. Generally, you'll always be in high plunge damage range since it's not super high threshold, but it's still good to be wary if you're canceling too fast. Here's a demo of what his low versus high plunge damage looks like. The 8 to 9Ks are low and the 11 to 12Ks are high. You can roughly see how high the threshold is to gain high plunge damage. The weapon used here is a 1 star at level 70 weapon to demo the comparison, which is why the damage numbers are lower than you would expect. Once we get into playstyle, we'll talk about weaving in normal attacks to min-max DPS. Elemental skill. This is Xiao's dashing move. Deals a very solid multiplier of damage, generates 3 anima orbs, and can be used mid-air and travels a short distance. Each individual dash generates 3 anima orbs, even if spammed consecutively, so using 2-3 in sequence will generate 6-9 orbs. Now, these orbs are not generated during his burst phase, which will be important for his playstyle when we get to that. And if you do have Constellation 1, he can hold up to 3 charges instead of 2. This brings in his Ascension 4 passive, which increases his dash damage by 15% per dash that he does up to 3 times. And the stack lasts up to 7 seconds. So for C0 and C1 Shaos, this is a minor increase in damage because for the first one, you don't get a boost. And for the second one, you do get a 15% boost. The big benefit from this passive is actually for C6 Shao during which he can actually maintain the full 45% damage buff for a majority of his infinite dashes. Back to his elemental skill. So this dash, when used mid-air, also allows him to do a very short plunge attack that otherwise wouldn't be possible by just jumping. This is a cool little tech, but it's not really practical to use unless you have C6 Xiao. It's food for thought though. Elemental Burst. Xiao enters his Yaksha Berserk mode, granting increased jump height, increased normal charge plunge damage, greater AoE damage output, and animal infusion at the expense of his HP pool. So things to note, normal charge plunging bonus is in the same category as physical elemental damage bonus, so it suffers the same diminishing returns as animal damage bonus. This is more info for the artifact section when we talk about the goblet. His burst has a 15 second duration with an 18 second cooldown, which means technically he has 83% uptime with perfect rotations, but practically this is rarely the case, since usually you'll be swapping to three other party members and offloading their skills and bursts, which takes at least 4.5 seconds. A 70 energy cost also means that Xiao does encounter pretty heavy energy issues, so an animal battery is generally recommended and additional Favonius weapon users to generate party orbs. Talking about his burst brings in his Ascension 1 passive, which grants an increased damage the longer he is in his burst form. Activating grants a 5% damage increase immediately, and then takes him 12 additional seconds to reach the 25% damage increase, which remains for the last 3 seconds of his burst. This incentivizes you to keep Xiao for his entire 15 second burst duration and maximizes his DPS rotation. Another often overlooked thing with Xiao's burst is the increased AoE range of his plunge attack. In the demo, you can visually see the rough boundary of his plunge AoE range where the shockwave roughly ends. 
I would say it's roughly the same size as Bennett's burst. Talent leveling wise, I'd recommend priority investment in his normal attack first, which grants him the largest boost to his plunge multiplier. Then burst for the increased plunge damage buff. And finally, elemental skill as needed. I would definitely recommend to level all his skills to at least level 6. If you're planning to go beyond level 8 or higher, I'd prioritize his normal attack first before his burst for the greatest increase to plunge damage. If you're running C6 Shao, maximize his elemental skill as well because it becomes the largest percentage of his burst rotation damage due to the dash spam. So, how do we play Xiao? The simplest way to describe his rotation is support abilities first, then elemental skill once or twice before activating the burst, and then plunge plus normal attack or anything in between spam. Since he really wants to stay in his burst as long as possible, supports need to offload any necessary abilities before he starts his rotation. Elemental skill once or twice before popping his burst to pre-generate the orbs so he can collect them post burst activation. If you have C1's Xiao, don't triple dash before burst as you'll lose some of the orbs in translation. During his burst, his elemental skill dashes do not generate any particles so unless you are a c6 dash spammer or have no problem refunding his burst after it's over i'd recommend being conservative with the dashes until after his burst is over to collect the fresh animal orbs now for the plunge plus normal attack spam this portion has as much complexity as you want to dive into i'm going to go over an autopilot playstyle and a more optimized recommendation that in my opinion is cost effective for the amount of mechanics necessary and rotational DPS output. These demos are going to be using a 1 star level 70 weapon. Autopilot playstyle. So this one involves no normal attack weaving at all. Just jump and plunge. This will on paper typically net you about 11 to 13 plunge attacks if you don't need to reposition that much. Practically in fight style, you'll probably hover around 10 to 12 plunge attacks since some repositioning is typically improvised. Muscle memory will assist in finding the right timings to jump and cancel the height for a high plunge attack. And this is generally not mentioned too much, but highly recommend it. One of the perks of Xiao's damage rotation is his ability to avoid ground damage for a majority of his burst. Please use this to your benefit in actual fights. It is more than worth to sacrifice a perfect rotation for survivability and repositioning for better AoE damage. If you are forced to swap out because Xiao is about to die, then you lose the tail end of his burst damage output, whereas Ascension 1 passive maximizes his personal buffs. Alright, besides the autopilot playstyle, this second one aims to weave in half of his N1 in between plunges and take advantage of a very quick jump cancel to shorten the delay. This is the N1 that we're talking about, which is actually two hits. So this demo was not the best execution by me, though it did get a little bit better at the end. With better timing, one or two more complete combos is possible. This combo utilizes the first half of the N1, which we'll call N0.5, the 37.9 multiplier, plus a high plunge of 297% at level 6. With proper execution, this usually trades one complete high plunge out of the 12-13 for 11-12 to 12 of N0.5, which is a minor gain of about 120% multiplier. Now, this is just a rough estimate, but in general, it is more damage. This playstyle, however, involves more spammy left click with semi-precise jump presses to cancel the N0.5. As a side note, I would recommend to lean towards this playstyle if running the Jade Spear as well, since it stacks the weapon faster with the N0.5 in between. Now, there are other combos that exist that I find much less practical in actual game situations, so I'm comfortable having these two be the staples. Between that plunge spam and the N0.5P spam, you may notice that when trying out both, you'll just stop caring and end up just doing a mixture of whatever fits naturally for your hands. So these combos are only perfected against stationary enemies most of the time, and while great to practice on, should mainly serve as a foundation to get your groove with the character. So as long as you're enjoying his up-down, up-down playstyle, that's all that matters. Only one thing that I would recommend keeping in mind is not plunging too low to miss the high plunge damage threshold. Small bonus tech before we move on to weapons. The plunge attack does have an extra single target hit if you land on the enemy's hitbox. This is easier to notice on certain enemies like Ajdaha. You'll notice that besides the 11k AoE plunge attack, there's an additional single target 4 to 5k hit. No need to go out of your way for this though, since it's not practically applicable in most situations. I just wanted to demonstrate it. Alright, let's get off this 1 star weapon and demonstrate his actual arsenal. So, what's available for Xiao as a plunge DPS character? For the 4 star weapons, as mentioned, he doesn't have access to that many easily accessible weapons. None of the craftables shine for him, so either you'll have to settle for a black lift weapon, battle pass weapon, or the gadget weapons. Here's what we have on the roster. Pavonius Lance R5. It's a weaker but energy recharge friendly weapon. Blackliff, Star Glitter crit damage weapon. Deathmatch, Battle Pass crit rate weapon. And then the Lithic Spear. It's a gacha 4 star weapon, available on the current weapon banner along with the other two 5 stars. For our 5 star weapon roster, Skyward Spine, Jade Spear, Staff of Homa, Engulfing Lightning, and the new Calamity Queller. 
In order to compare my engulfing lightning, which I only have one at R590, there will be a separate visualization comparing it to the R590 Homa, of which I also have an R180 Homa to cross check with the other level 80 weapons. This way you guys can see how all the weapons compare to the Homa, even if I don't have certain ones at R180. For these tests, I'll be running my best 2-piece Veer Dezen and 2-piece Attack% percent Shimanawa's or Gladiator combo. These are what you can expect from damage numbers completely unbuffed and zero team synergy. The burst rotation will follow what you would normally expect in actual combat. Elemental skill times 2 into burst plunge attacks. I'm going to cap the burst plunges to 10 hits and not 12 to 13, and I'm not going to be including any N0.5 hits. So the damage you'll be seeing is truly the lower end spectrum. For my mask, I will be swapping between crit rate and crit damage main stat for corresponding crit based weapons. Stats of Xiao will be shown alongside their DPS rotations, so you can see beyond just the numbers to see how much crit rate, crit damage, and recharge a certain build used. Crit rate food will be used to speed up testing. This does not increase or decrease the numbers shown. Let's begin with the 4 star weapons. Favonius Lance first. This is the weakest in damage but highest utility of all the choices that he has. Most of you will never run this, but it's good to show how much weaker it is compared to classic DPS weapons. <laughs> Blacklift next. Technically, this is the free budget choice for players who don't have any gacha or battle pass weapons. Lithic next. So reintroduced in this weapon banner, this weapon's strength, especially with refinements, may surprise some of you frogs and is a hot contender. Demonstrated here with two stacks, one from himself and one from Jolly in the team comp. And finally, Deathmatch. For my Battle Pass gamers, this is likely the most common build choice for an easy, high crit rate, crit damage build path. With my artifacts, my crit rate, crit damage ratio is very close to perfect at 94 199. So you'll notice that the crit rate for Deathmatch for Xiao is a solid 15% higher than other builds, but still maintains good damage. Alright, so those are the 4-star weapons. I think the only thing possibly surprising here is R5 Lithic Spear Massive Advantage with just 2 Liyue Party stacks at 250,000 minimum burst rotation. Blacklift's Zero Stack and Deathmatch are expectedly nearly identical in damage output. Blacklift outputs more damage with 1-3 to three stacks. Deathmatch has a 15% crit rate advantage for more consistent crits. Pavonius comes in at 10% weaker than Blacklift Deathmatch but has nearly 100% uptime on his burst. For long-term fights, Pavonius' value can be seen with very high burst cycling where the other weapons fall flat on dead time strangling for energy orbs. With proper team building though, Favonius value falls off due to less issue with proper Xiao energy funneling. In general though, whatever you have invested should work perfectly fine. They all have their pros and minor cons. Alright, on to 5 star weapons. Skyward Spine first, a basic statistic for Xiao, nothing special. Alright, next up, Homa R180. Running this beast of a weapon at greater than 50% HP, so this is minimal Homa damage. Now, Jade R180. No skewed testing by running max stacks before popping the burst. Gaining the stacks here mid burst like you would normally do in an actual fight. Also, running N0.5p instead of straight plunges benefits this weapon more and reaches closer to the homa damage. And last but not least, Calamity R180. 
Some of you may be surprised how strong this weapon turned out for Xiao. So I'll just let the numbers show you. So for these 5 star weapons, some of you may be shocked at how powerful Calamity turned out. Stacks were gained mid burst just like the Jade Spear, no skew testing. The high base attack, all damage bonus, and more attack percent helped it equalize the playing field with Homa. These two weapons essentially trade attack percent for crit damage. Under Bennett's burst buff though, Homa does win a clear victory over Calamity. Jade Spear is falling behind slightly, but still an exceptionally solid weapon for Xiao. And as an extra, here's how R590 Engulfing Lightning compares to R590 Homa. We already see that R180 Homa is at the top end of damage compared to all other level 80 weapons. This will give a comparison to how much weaker the R590 Engulfing Lightning is. So even post burst, engulfing lightning is still 10 to 12 percent weaker than Homa at equal refinement. In general, for the five-star weapons, I would say that you can't really go wrong with your investment choice. Calamity is an excellent choice despite the off-field passive and not being usable for him. All the three-star weapon options on the current banner are high on the charts as well. That includes Jade Spear, Calamity, and Lithic Spear. So for my Xiao gamers, this is a great time to ensure a weapon for him. As a final note, I would say that despite limited budget options for Xiao, whatever you do end up getting can pack quite a punch. On to Xiao's artifacts. So this hasn't changed since 1.3 and doesn't seem to be updating anytime soon with no dedicated Animo DPS 4-piece set. He has had to run with a 2-piece Viridescent and 2-piece Attack% percent mixture since his original release, which originally was only Gladiator for 2-piece Attack% percent, but now also includes the Shimanawa set. So Shimanawas is definitely much easier to farm, but Gladiator pieces are also slightly easier to obtain now with the Strongbox feature that has become a staple to converting trash artifacts into, well, usually more trash, but sometimes you uncover a diamond in the rough. Gladiator and Shimanawas are interchangeable as they both provide 18% attack, so aim for the best balance of substats. So these set bonuses provide 15% animal damage and 18% attack, provide Xiao with about a 15-20% to DPS increase, which is much less compared to usual gains from a 4-piece set. So as mentioned in the Xiao prep video, because these set bonuses don't really provide a huge boost to his personal damage output like other sets do, it's very important to aim for the best possible substat pieces to maximize your crit and crit damage because otherwise his damage lacks the scaling it needs. Drop any of these 2-piece set bonuses and just run one 2-piece set or none if the substats just aren't there. I would say that if you're investing in Xiao, try your best to hit a 75 crit rate to 150 crit damage ratio or better. With crit based weapons, this will be much easier to do and possibly beyond into the 80 crit rate, 160 to 200 crit damage range. Beyond that is just how blessed by RNG you are. On top of these crit stats, keep your eye out for any stray energy recharge substats you can get along with the crit. Aiming for 120 energy recharge or higher will feel much better for burst rotation, but I would say prioritize a decent crit ratio first. Newer players can run the full Berserker set or a mix of the Berserker set with any of the early attack percent like Braveheart or Sojourner. Those gamers without a 2-piece Viridescent set, don't be afraid to run a 2-piece Gladiator plus 2-piece Shimanawa's combo for 36% attack. Alright, main stats. Very straightforward attack scaling DPS stats. For the timepiece, I would prioritize attack percent for the raw damage gain. Specific substat builds can swap for an energy recharge timepiece here if that piece rolled absolutely insane crit lines and your general 5 pieces can compensate for the 46.6% attack loss from the substats. For the goblet, animal damage is the priority, but for very high level 10 plus burst chows, the extremely high normal charge plunging damage gain from burst can justify an attack goblin. So this high damage gain is calculated in the same category as physical or elemental damage, so there's a bit of breathing room if you want to opt for an attack attack crit build or an energy recharge attack crit build. That would be involving a switch from animo damage here to attack percent. So this is only recommended for I would say level 10 to 13 burst shows. So these shows are either crowned C0 shao mains or C5 to C6 monsters. For the mask, straightforward crit rate or crit damage choice here. 
Xiao does have a crit rate ascension stat, so Deathmatch or Jade Spear users can skip directly to a crit damage mask. If you're running a crit damage or a no crit weapon, I'd advise a crit rate mask. I would say that the minimum is 60% crit, but recommend comfortably a 70% crit because Xiao is one of those characters who doesn't get that much boost from his set bonus like other characters do. Time for constellations. So in my opinion, Xiao is one of those characters who, with the right investment in mastering his playstyle, honestly needs none of his constellations to function at 90% of his non-C6 effectiveness. C6 is a whole different beast and introduces also more mechanically intensive play to maximize his elemental skill spam. So, let's dive in. Constellation 1. Elemental skill can now hold 3 charges instead of 2. On top of just being more damage, main value from this constellation is just another skill proc worth of energy orbs. This is his most notable constellation besides C6. It's an extra proc of damage, energy orbs, and travel distance in the overworld. Small note for his burst rotation, I do not recommend spamming all three of these before activating his burst. Stick to one to two skill activations that give a 20 second window to regenerate since each one is 10 second cooldown, and his burst is active for the 15 seconds. This helps maximize having as many of his dashes ready when he needs to refund his energy. Constellation 2, off-field recharge increases by 25%. This is a nice little quality of life for Xiao off-field. However, the majority of his energy is going to be directly funneled into him while he's on-field, by his own elemental skill orbs or the animal battery you likely have with him on the team, which won't be affected by this constellation. So this constellation only affects, for example, the Favonius orbs generated by your other off-field supports like Diona or Zhongli. Constellation 1 and Constellation 2's DPS increase values are pretty hard to calculate since they are mostly utility based. Constellation 3, skill plus 3 levels. This is just a raw 20% damage increase for his skill procs. Constellation 4, Xiao gains a 100% defense bonus when his HP falls below 50% HP, just to help him not die in his burst form when he's lower HP. Constellation 5, burst plus 3 levels, which means more normal charge plunging damage bonus. This value right here. Life drain decrease is capped at 2% HP per second at level 7. Constellation 6, so when Xiao is in burst form, every time his plunge attack hits at least 2 enemies, he gains an elemental skill stack, and he can spam his skill indefinitely for the next 1 second. So practically, that is about 2 to 3 dashes in the 1 second. You didn't mishear that. C6 Xiao during his burst just does a plunge dash 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 repeat until his burst is over for the most simplest playstyle. If you want to get more intensive though, C6 Xiao actually introduces a lot more complexity to his playstyle kit. Since his elemental skill reactivations mid burst allow for soft jumps into extended post dash plunge attack. If it's timed right, the infinite dash for one second can also be activated right as his burst ends, allowing him to gain crucial energy from those free dashes when you otherwise would be energy locked. Not going to go too much into this, since if you're interested in C6 Xiao, you probably know or have experimented with his dash text, and it will probably be information overload for most people watching this video. The downside of this constellation is that it cannot be used against solo bosses since he needs two enemies in one plunge to activate. So unfortunately, against solo bosses, he's basically C0 Xiao playstyle. Definitely a character that unleashes a much more active playstyle with constellation 6. When it comes to team building, Xiao can be pretty restrictive to specific supports in order to maximize his on-field DPS. As an Animo DPS with reliance on his burst infusion, another Animo battery is highly recommended to assist with his generally low refunding capabilities. Higher recharge Xiao's and or Constellation 2 won't need to rely on this as much, but still recommended in order to avoid loss of DPS time without his burst. Generally, team comps running Xiao rely on him only to deal out 80% of the team's damage due to his burst duration being 15 second on an 18 second cooldown, leaving only 3 seconds of downtime. With this unique plunge playstyle as well, enemies can get noticeably knocked around, so some form of crowd control via grouping or petrification is usually favorable to limit the annoying knockback. This playstyle also limits the number of viable off-field supports that can be used with him since very little directly synergize with plunge attacks. Common off-field choices like Beidou and Qingqiu are much weaker to combo with Xiao than their usual team comps, but if you want to make them work, they have soft synergy with this N0.5 playstyle which weaves normal attacks in between plunges. If planning to maximize animo damage as well, then we can attempt to make use of Geo Residence and Zhongli's Jade Shield, which are the few natural increases and resistance threats for animo. Whales, Gene Enthusiasts, and Lucky F2Ps, and everyone in between who have Constellation 4 plus Gene can make use of her 40% animo resistance shred to provide Xiao with his strongest whale synergy. That brings us to his most expensive and highest end composition, Xiao plus Jean plus Zhongli plus one Geo, typically Albedo for his off-field sub DPS support. Jean acts as an animo battery plus healing and if constellation 4, 40% animo resist shred. Zhongli provides easy access petrified crowd control with his burst plus Jade shield resist shred and survivability. Albedo unlocks Geo Resonance for additional all damage increase and off-field sub DPS via his transient blossoms. 
Only problem with this team is that it is a full five star team, of which one is not really replaceable, John Lee. One is a large value loss, Gene. And one is the only consistent, completely off field sub DPS requiring 1.5 seconds of setup time, Albedo. However, we can reduce the specifics of this team comp to a general team for Xiao. Xiao plus any Animo battery plus double Geo. Usually it's John Lee plus Albedo. Double Animo and double Geo to maximize damage, survivability, and decent refund from the Animo battery. This Animo battery can be Venti, Kazuma, Sucrose for grouping, or Gene Sayu for healing. Venti is highly recommended if running the grouping comp, running standard Animo DPS and not Elemental Mastery build. Understand that Xiao cannot directly deal his major AoE plunge damage during Venti's burst, so rotate into the end of it when it expires. Kozlo and Sucrose generally run pure Elemental Mastery builds to maximize their buffing kit, so they aren't as valuable here, but Sucrose still has access to a lower height grouping burst than Venti's, which Xiao can directly plunge attack in, and grants great amount of animal orbs for Xiao to refund his burst. From this general composition, a few things can be altered for more flexible slots. This second Geo, the Albedo here, can be swapped out for any off-field DPS standalone unit, like Fischl's Oz for example, or a buffer like Bennett. Keeping John Lee is highly recommended for the Jade Shield Resist Shred as well as his Burst Crowd Control. non John Lee havers can use Diona for her consistent shielding and emergency healing. Removing the second Animo is generally not really recommended, as this makes Xiao's Burst Uptime a lot more fragile, but if you have no other choice, then Favonius Weapon Users and or Standalone Damage Off-Field Supports are the best choices. And, as I mentioned in the prep video, there is also a possibility with running Xiao plus an Animo Battery and then another Duo DPS pair if you can spare the resources. However, I generally would not recommend this route since Xiao's burst has very low downtime and running another rotational DPS means Xiao potentially wastes a lot of his built-in kit's uptime. 3-5 to five seconds between his burst ending and ready for his next activation is not enough time for another rotational DPS to impact the fight without interfering with his rotation. Also typically players will have the luxury of running two dedicated rotational DPS in one team due to resource management, team synergy, and glass cannon no survivability. Duo DPS pair refers to something like Hu Tao Xingqiu, Aya Kamona, or Ito Goro. Worth mentioning, but generally not recommended. All right, let's showcase some of these comps using the lowest end of weapons available for him, the Black Cliff Pole. Cue the music, Mr. Cope.
And with the showcase complete, that about wraps up the core of this guide. With an anime protagonist playstyle that caters to both casuals and min-maxers, Xiao excels at consistent AoE animal damage while expertly dodging enemy attacks with his vertical advantage. If this guide helped you understand Xiao a little better, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's free and really helps the video get recommended and reach a broader audience. Thanks for watching and I wish that everyone's still trying to pull Xiao the best of luck. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.